When building an API, it's possible that your consumers might want the data in different formats, depending on their use case. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at output formats. Output formats? What's an output format? I don't think it's a real thing. Output formatters. Uh, and how they can be used to make your API more accessible. You know, whenever we come back from the throw there, um, we're always like got these grins on our face. We're going to have to do a super cut of all the guitar solos at some point so that people understand why we're always laughing. Yeah, people don't understand that if we take this like break and we do the guitar sounds ourselves that we end <laughs> yes. up editing it's, in later. It's a three part harmony Simon's beatboxing, I do bass. No. It's amazing. It is guaranteed to be disappointed if you ever actually see this. <laughs> it's a lot better in our minds than it is in reality. <laughs> so output formatters. <laughs> yeah, so actually, uh, as is almost always the case with these uh, these episodes, it's this is something that came up at work. And uh, my coworker, Carol, pointed, out, pointed me towards output formatters as a possible solution for this. So we had uh, an endpoint that's just returning a list of data that in the UI we display in a table format, or like in a, in a tab data table. And, uh, but they also want this, you know, click to download as a CSV button. We didn't want to have to, you know, create a whole new endpoint for that. So he pointed me towards output formatters and let's just take a look at how you configure those and what they are. Uh, so in general, though, uh, there's two different things in ASP.NET in terms of like getting data in and out of your APIs or your endpoints. Uh, there's something called input formatters, which take part in the model binding part of, uh, of the request, so when data is coming in. And then output formatters are, as the name would suggest, about formatting the data that you're returning from your API endpoint. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here, though, is I'm just going to go manage NuGet packages, and there's no way that I'm going to write out a CSV file manually, so I'm going to go here and install good old CSV helper. My favorite. So I think this is a good point here, actually, that CSV feels like a very simple format that you can just <laughs> write by yourself, it but really there are a isn't. ton of edge cases in CSV that you have to be aware of. Um, handling of quotes, handling of commas in line, um, handling of line endings, those sorts of things. So it really is a good idea to use a library for this. There's a reason why this library is on major version number 26. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just did a file new project, uh, and this is you know the classic example here of the weather forecast controller that's just gonna return some random data for me. And it is just a weather forecast. Um, returns a date, these temperatures, and a summary. I'll just run this, in the, and it should open up in the browser and so, show me some JSON just so that we can um, see what it's doing here. So there's that data, an array of JSON objects. And I will close that now, and let's go and add this uh, helper, or this formatter to the project. So first thing we're going to do is create a new class here called And this is a text thing that we're returning, so we can they provide an abstract class here that we can inherit from to do a lot of the work for us. Uh, so that's just part of the MVC namespace. And I'm just going to do control dot here to implement the abstract class. And so this is the main method that we need to make sure that we implement is the right body response body async. There's a couple of other things that we'll do here. We're also going to do a uh, generate a constructor. No. Oh. Actually, there's another override that I'm going to going to do here, which is called can write result. So this gives us an opportunity to inspect the actual context of the thing that we're uh, we're outputting to see if this is something that we can handle, that this formatter can handle, and in there. Pretty simple. I'm just going to check and see if um, so. The co I'm copying and pasting some code in here, but there is a context dot object type here 
that I'm just going to check and see if it is an I enumerable. And if it is, then uh, did I copy in the wrong thing in here? Oh, can write type. Sorry, I overrode the wrong thing. Disregard. Can write type is the one that I wanted. Let me just go and copy and paste that back in. Okay, so I'm just checking if it is an I enumerable, and if so, then it's something that I can output to CSV. Doesn't really make sense for something that isn't I enumerable, that isn't like a list of things. Um, so then I'm just going to return false otherwise. And I'm also going to create a constructor here, so that'll just be public CSV. And what we're going to do is tell it that there's this concept of like supported media types. So the media type is something that will come in as a header on the request saying these are the types of responses that I accept. Um, so here I'm going to say, well, I'll just paste it in again to make sure that I don't get that wrong. So text slash CSV is the type that the MIME type that I'm looking for that I plan to support with this formatter. And then we can also add supported encodings. Uh, I did it again. So you do oh, have to be careful when you're yes. doing the includes here. So it's not the one from system.net.http.headers. It is the Microsoft.net. So that system.net one must be from like the before times. Yeah, the before times. Is that what we're calling it? Everything is the before yeah. times. So. Okay, I approve that that works for me. Okay, so writing out these objects. So again, we get this context when we do the right response body. And the context has a couple of things on it that are going to be of interest. One is the object type. We've already done the check through this method here. Like the MBC will have done the check to make sure that we can write it. Uh, and then there's the object, which is the thing itself. So that's the object that's being returned from our uh, API endpoint we're wanting to format. So uh, first, the way that we would write this with CSV, how do I want to approach this? I'm just going to copy the whole thing and we'll we'll talk about it. So um, going to import a bunch of things here. So we got system.io for our stream writer. And we've got CSV helper and CSV helper configuration. So I'm just kind of doing some default config here saying that we're using the installed UI culture, variant culture probably. I'm not sure which one is the right culture to use in this context, but Let's just make this work. Okay, so this method's going to be async, and okay, so that's all good now. Okay, so we start out by creating a stream writer that we can write to, or that we can pass off to CSV helper so that it can write, um, and we're basing that on the stream of the response body. So that's we're going to be just streaming this out to the response body, and then there's a couple of things that we need to. Uh, specify here, there's the selected encoding, which is passed in. So making sure that we're respecting the encoding that the client, uh, that the request asked for. And then there's a buffer size, which I wasn't really sure what to use there, but I need to specify it because I need to get to this leave open true. If I set, if I leave that to the default of false, uh, we're prematurely going to end up closing the stream. And we we don't want to like take over this stream. It's based on, or it's being managed by ASP.NET Core. So we need ASP.NET Core to continue to manage that stream and decide when it's done and close but it. You could just use a named parameter and not, then not set that 1024, right? Oh, can I? I think so. Uh, don't know if I can in this case. Let's try Thanks. that, because that would be nice. What was it called again? Leave open? Uh, leave open? Yeah. Leave open. OK, I can in this case. Even better, because I don't really want to mess with that value. And then we create our CSV writer, passing it the stream writer that we just created. And it needs a configuration, so I'm just using basically a, a standard config there. And then we just write the records. So the CSV writer has a write records async, where you can pass it an I enumerable. And it's just going to go through and inspect those objects and dump them out to CSV. If you need to do any special formatting on that CSV that's kind of outside, I don't know if we've ever done an episode on CSV helper itself, but there are certain attributes you can put on the your model class here to specify how you want CSV to output it. We'll just let it do its thing here and see what the output looks like.
The other interesting thing here is that we need to use the uh, async version of using. Uh, if we don't do that, if we just do like a regular using, it calls the non-async version of dispose on CSV writer. And then ASP.NET Core freaks out because it really doesn't like when you do synchronous operations on uh, on the response, anything dealing with the response body. So that's why that 08 is there. And I've actually never used the async dispose before. This. Simon, I'm going to be updating my pull request on my uh, <laughs> CSV <laughs> file that I've got waiting there. <laughs> right. I won't merge it. It's a good thing I didn't merge it. Well, we'll see. Let's see if we can actually make this work before you make a decision there, James. <laughs> okay, so last thing we need to do is uh, over in our startup.cs, we need to tell ASP.NET Core about this output formatter. Uh, so there's a, in the MVC options uh, here, when you're adding controllers to your project, you can add output formatters, which I will do as, what did I call this thing? It was just a CSV output. Added that, and then the other thing you have to do is tell it to respect browser accept headers, and that's so that it can uh, automatically go and choose which one is most appropriate based on the accept header that was passed in. So in theory, that's all we need to do. Let's see if we can actually make this work. This is as far as I went with testing this before recording. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so we're still getting JSON back, which is kind of what we expected. We haven't told it that we want CSV. I'm going to jump into the Edge browser tools here and zoom in a little bit for you. OK, so this guy here is the request. It's returning JSON. What I can do, though, is hit Edit and Resend. And that brings up this, if you have it enabled, the feature, this network console, which is kind of like a, a little mini postman built into your browser tools here. And then I have the, what's that? Post person. I'm not applying agenda to that post person. Oh, jeez, I didn't even follow. Oh. Post person. Okay, sorry. I have like an entire team of people using that now, huh? Great. I've used that before. I just wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't making the connection. Okay, so I'm just going to modify my accept header here to say that I want text CSV, and I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that it actually returns what I'm. Expecting and there you go. Oh, look at that. Of course, now the dates might not be in the formatted the way you want them to. Uh, that's a whole other thing of dealing with dates, especially in CSV files. But and if you're opening those in Excel, but there you go. You've got <laughs> CSV output, uh, and it's the exact same uh, endpoint. We didn't have to make any changes to our controller at all. And this also works, um, so let's just experiment with this a little bit. So this is the using the pattern where we're just like returning an I enumerable of a type, but often what we have instead is like it would be an I action result. And that still works here too. So if we did a you know, return an OK response, uh, that should still work the exact same way as it did before. So I'm getting my JSON, and I'll refresh that. Oh, where's my request? I zoomed in, and I can't see it now. There it is. Headers, accept. There you go. So it still works if you're using that pattern. Uh, of course, uh, if you explicitly tell it that you want to return JSON, then it's it's going to return a JSON result. No. No, that only works if you inherit from controller. Yeah. So if you're doing this pattern where you're returning explicitly a JSON result, then it's it's going to force it to return a JSON result. But if you're doing uh, this pattern here where you do an OK result, then that works too. So that's output formatters in a nutshell. Um, I kind of like it. And for us, it allowed us to you know, avoid having to create additional endpoints specifically for CSV downloads.
Right. So in in my case, like I, I, we were just talking before we started recording that I actually just did a pull request for a CSV file um, uh, exporter or downloader or whatever. And in my case, I actually needed to reshape the data. So I think that in terms of having to change the signature of the object that's being returned, um, it wouldn't necessarily work because otherwise you're going to get into branching statements um, yeah. possibly. So um, is there a way, I guess the other thing would be um, the formatter would only kick in. Hmm. So no, you're, it's still the format. So we haven't modified the, um, controller action at all in this case it just it's based on the header it's changing the way that the output is serialized yep great okay so in my case where i needed to modify the controller um th the the uh, method on the controller that that doesn't work in that that approach so right just thinking through use cases here probably mm -hmm. not at all relevant to anybody watching the show i was just trying to troubleshoot my own pull request <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. There are some uh, some libraries, like there's a web API contrib library that has a CSV output formatter in it. Uh, but I, I struggled to actually include it in my projects because it brought in a bunch of dependencies to older versions of ASP.NET Core. Um, so I ended up just writing my own and it worked out okay because it's pretty, it's not like a ton of code. And I actually ended up having a bit of custom stuff in here too. So some of my endpoints, for example, they don't just return an I enumerable, they return a paged list result, which returns like the, you know, how many total items are there, how big is this page, like additional information about the page of data that you're looking at, uh, which we don't want to do if we're doing the export to CSV. So my formatter in that case knows how to deal with those specific types of results to get at the, the inner property that just contains the data. And then I just have the front end request when it's doing the download, say, you know, give me a thousand items and, and download it to CSV instead of doing like smaller pages to display it on the screen. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Um, I think I'm supposed to ask you to remember to like, comment, and share. Uh, and if you need a list of things to like, comment, and share, we'd be happy to export that in CSV for you. We'll see everybody next week. Cheers. Hey, all right.